911 operators of Reddit, what were the most creative ways that people asked for help when they couldn't explicitly say it? I've managed to question a caller by using my console to display the keys they pressed because they couldn't talk because they were afraid they'd be heard, i.e., if you're upstairs, press 1. Is anyone else home? 1 for yes, 0 for no. Worked out pretty well. Another time I had someone talk to me as if I were their mother and had to work responses into the conversation. I did my best to help feed them lines to keep it going and discovered. I worked 911 up until a few months ago. I received a call from someone who asked me how I was doing and I originally thought it was a prank but then I asked if there was an emergency. She quickly said yes. So I had to ask questions in a way that she could answer, as if she was talking on the phone to one of her friends. The hardest part was getting a description of the subject and the house and her address. She ended up saying something along the lines of, Silly. Don't you remember I live at 1234 2nd Street, not 1st Avenue. Ended up being a domestic, and she was pretty beat up but thankfully she got help that night. Sorry for formatting on mobile. Edit, hey thanks for the gold. First time I've ever had it haha. <laughs> Obviously not a 911 operator, but how an operator understood my creative way of asking for help. When I was about 14, I had one of those slide phones. This was around 2008. My brother was having an angry fit, and he broke a window. My dad, who was abusive, came into the kitchen and found the broken glass. He flipped. My dad was yelling and screaming. Then he started beating my brother with his fists. I called 911 and I was sobbing and he came over and slid my phone off. Disconnecting the call. Edit, as I said in a comment. I don't think he knew it was a 911. He just turned his head and saw me on my phone crying. I was terrified. There was my dad. Now next to me. Breathing heavily. It was so. Silent. I was terrified. He walks away to go bathroom. My brother's on the floor in front of me. My cell phone vibrates. The police operator calls back. I know my dad won't be long, and I was right. He came back, just as the lady on the phone asked if everything was okay, saying that there was a disconnect from this number. I pretended they, the operator, were a friend looking for our mutual friend's house or something. I don't remember. I told them that they had the wrong address. I said it was 121, street name, they were looking for, not my address, 122, same street name. The lady seemed confused for a moment, because there was a pause, then asked if I needed help. I said yes, it's just across the street from 121 street, can't miss it, NPLSA, I'll see you at school tomorrow, then hung up. The police arrived 5 minutes later, to cars for police. My dad tried to play it off but the police came in and took us outside to talk because my dad was looming over us. Edit. I fixed some sentence structure in my post to make certain parts hopefully more understandable. My dad is like a switch. Flicked on and off when it comes to his anger. And my brother is the same way. My dad is a bit slow mentally and after he has his white rage moment. He can literally be laughing and smiling the next second as if nothing happened. My brother took after him a lot and is abusive to others from it. My brother has had and used that as an excuse to act and behave badly. A lot in the same way my dad was. So he got angry at something small. And in his rage, he smashed his fist through the kitchen window. The cops already knew our house had problems. In 2008 Quebec was still very much a province I felt didn't care about abuse or mental health until quite recently. They knew we were already in family counseling, group therapy, school therapy, anger management classes, CPS shit, etc. So they told my dad to chill and considered it a civil matter. They left. I went and hid under my desk and my dad went into the garage to work on his car. My mum I think was really scared to leave my dad for a while. He was really verbally abusive to her and squandered any money my mum tried to save on car shit. I also think she believed the therapy would help eventually. Anyways, my dad disappeared for 3 weeks and during that time my aunt, dad's sister, who is the best aunt in the world and my mum's best friend, 
told her that they saw my dad cheating on her. I don't know the whole story, but my mum kinda broke her down and was shaking while she and my aunt went to a lawyer to do the paperwork. My dad came back and I remember when I got out of school. My dad was waiting. Now, my dad never came to get us at school and the first thing I said was you're getting a divorce. He kinda just looked at me and nodded. We got home and sat at the table and mum explained what was going on. I was 15 and graduating high school that year. So that was stressful, but I just remember laughing. Like a crazy person's laugh, because I just couldn't manage a tear. My brother went to his room and I went to the bathroom which was adjacent to the kitchen. I listened to every word my dad said, and for many years, and still now, I'm mad at the things and excuses he gave. I told myself I would come from this know what not to look for in a marriage. For those asking how things are now, I talk to my dad once every month or two. I don't make an active effort because he can't seem to be bothered to- He is remarried to a woman no one in the family likes because she's very controlling and very stuck in her ways. I've dissociated slash disowned my brother about 4 to 5 years ago. He is extremely abusive in many ways. It had gotten to the point where I was afraid of sleeping in the same apartment as him because he was so aggressive. There are other many things that he's done to me and others that have led me to this decision. It upsets my family, especially my mum, but my husband and I firmly refuse to allow him in our lives, especially when we start having kids. I'm the first on my mum's side to go to and graduate from college. I have a stable, well-paying job. I'm immigrating to the United States to be with my husband and firmly take it one day at a time. Oh I want to thank everyone who gave their encouragement. I live today with the knowledge that I shall not let my past define me. I firmly believe that I made the decisions to get where I'm today because I chose not to allow those things to get to me. I had to be strong because I firmly believe that at least one of my mother's children will make it in life. I will get out of my poverty. I will have a healthy relationship with my husband. And I do. And will allow my children to grow in a home that is nothing like mine or my husband's. I also want to thank those who have gilded me. You've popped the cherry to them and those that wish to gild me. Further, please, in the future, donate to a cause that helps people of abuse, both both men, women and children alike. Reddit doesn't need more of your hard earned money. 3 and for those who have been abused or are being abused, please know that it can get better. I know it's hard when you're a kid and feel like you've no place to go to or no one to talk to and I know some adults don't listen. You can feel like you're screaming at them but trust me, it does get better. I was suicidal. I'm diagnosed with severe depressed, sat, and gad, and I take pills. But it does get so much better. You can make it better, please. Take it one day at a time. Take it like a hard pill to swallow, but then you shit that pill out when it's all said and done, and see yourself when you have escaped the terrors and the nightmares, and can luck back on it with a giant middle finger to it all, and a duck you on your lips. You fight, you struggle and you get through this. You can do it. I believe in you. Me. 911. What's your emergency? Them. Hi. Mom. How are you? Me. Are you in direct danger? Them, yeah. But I'm doing alright. Mom. How are you? Me. Can you verify that your address is the one that popped up on my screen? Them, yeah. That sounds good. Looking forward to dad visiting soon. Wish you could make it out here. Two. At this point I'm sending everything I can to their location. Police. Fire. M's. Me. Help is on the way. Ma'am. I want you to stay on the phone with me until they get there. Them, I'll try, but don't know if I can. Mom, might not be able to afford it. Me, I understand. Stay with me, as long as you can. We talked for about 30 seconds more before the police got to her location. Someone's crazy ex showed up at their place of work with a gun, demanding to see said ex. This woman at the front desk had the wits and calm to fake phone call to her mom, while talking to me. The 911 operator, when the police got there, he saw them pull up, walked out and peacefully surrendered. I will remember that call and how calm and brave that woman was for the rest of my life. Edited to at, this was years before everyone and their pet had a cell phone.
Not my story but. It was a 911 hang up. On call back the person answered Domino's Pizza how can I help you. The dispatcher then asked you called 911. Did you have an emergency? The person says yes we have specials today. The dispatch is a little skeptical and thinks that the business might have called an accident which does happen. The dispatcher goes to ask if they are being robbed. The store clerk says that's right we have a two pizza special going right now. The dispatcher enters the call but continues to answer questions while the police are driving. Now in a situation like this, you're going to ask yes or no questions as it directs them to a very clear response on the other end. We have to ask for the race clothing description, so we know we are looking for. The Domino's employee says yes we can put black olives on both pizzas. The dispatcher then goes to ask what color shirt and pants the first one is wearing. The employee says for the first pizza you want both halves completely with black olives. The employee then says, and on the second pizza you want black olives and blue cheese? The dispatcher then goes to ask about the weapon, if it's a gun or knife. The employee said first one. Dispatcher then asks how many of them have weapons. Employee says only the first pizza. The dispatcher then asks if they arrived in car or on foot. Employee says that special is for carry out only. I'm sure there are quite a few details missing, but I heard that story years and years ago from a fellow co-worker who is now retired. In the same vein, if you're ever carjacked and can't call 9 double one, one, try to attract an officer's attention. Run red lights, slow roll stop signs, drift across lanes, don't use your turn signal, turn left from the right lane, basically drive like a DUI. Two, when you get pulled over, roll your window down all the way, maintain eye contact with the officer. 3. When asked for your driver license, hand the officer a credit card, keep eye contact. 4. Hopefully around this time the officer will come to the conclusion that something is wrong, or that you're at a UI. Either way, your goal is to have the officer ask you to get out of the car. 5. The instant, and I mean the instant you're out of the car. Tell the officer you've been carjacked. Don't worry about the carjacker hearing you. If they have a weapon, mention it. Edit to the people saying well I'd just backslash underscore backslash underscore backslash underscore instead. That's great. Do whatever you need to do to survive. There are no one size fits all answers that universally work all the time for everyone. But understand that if you're an abduction or carjacking victim, you need to get away as soon as possible. The carjacker wants you somewhere with no witnesses. Don't let that happen. Edit 2. Lots of stories about people being followed while driving. If this happens to you, stay cool. Call 9. Double 1. Drive to a public 24 hour place with lots of cameras. Like a Walmart, truck stop, or 24 hour McDonald's. Don't park. Just keep driving around in a loop. Hopefully. Your pursuer will eventually realize they are surrounded by witnesses and cameras, including people recording this crazy person driving around in circles for that sweet, sweet reddit karma, and will back off. Do not, under any circumstances, engage the road rager. They may have mistaken you for the person banging their spouse and want to kill you. Stay in your car and do not stop until the police arrive. Edit 3. For anyone wondering about police impersonators. Those are very, very rare. They do exist, but most people will never encounter one. If you're getting pulled over and you doubt the legitimacy of the officer, put on your four ways. Call 9 double 1 and give them your location. Tell them you think you're being pulled over by a police impersonator. They will be able to contact the officer and verify. Pull over at the nearest well lit and ideally with lots of witnesses area. Driving 2 miles to the nearest gas station equals okay. Driving 45 miles to the nearest Walmart equals unreasonable. Just be aware that, if you do this, you'd better have a damn good reason. Police officers don't drive you halls with the word police written in duct tape is a damn good reason. You can't be too sure these days is a ridiculous reason. If you have a ridiculous reason, expect to be charged. I'm not a 911 operator. But I did make a call like this, and the operator responded very well. It'll do my best to remember exactly what happened, but my wording is paraphrased at best. I currently work in the city parks near a high traffic bar street. 
One Saturday morning at 6am, a drunk patron walked over to me and started hitting on me really aggressively. He backed me into my booth and started grabbing me to kiss me. I froze in cold and escape. We have park cell phones that can contact the other workers at other lakes. So I managed to text my coworker call 9112, my lake immediately. She called 911, and they called me. But I called and talk clearly, because I didn't want to alarm the guy. I told him it was my coworker at the other lake, and that she called and unlock a chain. Here's the rough conversation. 911, we received a message that you needed help. Did you need help? Me, yep. That sounds about right. 911, what's going on? Me, I'm not sure. Were you able to unlock it? 911, can you tell us anything? Me, no, not at all. There aren't any boats on the lake yet. 911, is there someone there preventing you from talking? Me, for sure. I wish there wasn't. 911, are you in danger? Me, I can't really tell. But the sunrise is beautiful. Wish you could come see what I'm seeing. 911, okay, we're sending help now. Please stay on the line. I started talking to the man like my cow or can he did help while I held the phone in my hand. Within minutes, several police cars arrived and grabbed the man and pinned him to the ground and cuffed him. He looked me dead in the eyes and said, I can't believe you called the ducking cops. He had a knife on him. I'm so glad that 911 operator didn't hang up on me because I answered her questions so weird. But she did an awesome job. As did my cow orca and the police. Also, the police let me sit in the front seat and they let me goof around with a spotlight and they bickered jokingly with each other. Which made me laugh. They were pretty awesome overall. There is number 100%. The best would be to text someone and have them call us. But that isn't always possible either. Sometimes dialing and just lay the phone down so we can hear. Then try to say what's going on. Why are you hitting me? Why do you want to kill me? Trust me we listen to an open line like it's an FBI wiretap. If it's a landline, we will get an address. If it's a cell phone you are at the mercy of how well you cell phone provider pinpoints your GPS location. Cell phones with no active service and only call 9 double one are less accurate than one with service. If at all possible try to give hints to your location. You said it would be better when we move to ABC Street, comma, call the other pair I own by name. Pull the mad mama first middle last thing. Sometimes we are familiar with the person. And now where to look. Anything at all helps. Why we are listening we are doing searches on anything we hear that is identifiable. Have officers driving the general location at ping to we try our very best to find you. 911 operator here. I had a caller who I could tell was in distress from her breathing. As I kept talking she kept shushing me. I asked if she could tap on her phone once for yes and twice for no. I as I asked her yes and no questions I was able to use the GPS on her phone to get her location and decide for that someone was in her house and she was hiding. Police arrived on scene and it was her ex who had a gun and was looking for her. 9 years and that was one of the most craziest calls. Though stick with you. Edit. 4 words. Edit 2. Thanks for the gold kind stranger. 911 dispatchers are typically overlooked and the stepchild or public safety. Feels good to be acknowledged. Edit 3. First golden platinum. Thanks again. Please subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more of reddit universe.